This is Karen with NewClevelandRadio.net, and it is time for Avoid the Maze. And today I have on as my guest, Jacqueline. And Jacqueline, I'm going to have to ask you to pronounce your last name. I was going to say, it's Shoknecht. Okay, Shoknecht. All right. I wouldn't have said that. but I thought you were just going to fly with it and try. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I met Jacqueline through Podmatch.com. And when I read your bio, you said exactly what I've been hearing from so many people, including myself. Mm -hmm. I got to a certain age and realized that what I had been doing isn't fulfilling me right now. Right. And I'm going to make a change, even though I don't know how to do it. I'm exactly. just going to like yeah. jump in the water and see what happens. Mm -hmm. So let's go back from the beginning before you actually made the change. What were you doing that wasn't satisfying you enough? Well, I'll go back even a little further than that okay. because I, um, I was a lawyer in Los Angeles. I was a, an entertainment litigator and I was working at a firm and it just was a rough situation. They, it was a small firm. They didn't know how to train first year associates, the whole thing. And it just wasn't for me. So from there on, I went and worked at an internet company and time went on. Um, and my husband and I both ended up at an internet company together. And after that company went under, he stayed on and I was kind of floundering in my career. Okay. Um, I went to a TV and film production company and was a producer for a while and did a couple, I did a documentary there until my daughter was born. And then we moved to San Francisco because for my husband's work and it didn't make any sense for me to work and get paid the same amount of money as I would have been paying my nanny. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, you know, it just, at the time, it just didn't make any financial sense. And, you know, I was home with my baby and I wanted to spend that time. Well, you know, that turned into on and off 17 years of pretty much being at home. Um, I had done a few projects in in that time period, uh, I did work at an ad agency for about a year, but my husband travels a ton and, you know, it was always kind of like putting off what I wanted to do. Something just didn't work out with logistics. And I was kind of always the one to, you know, to give up what I, what I was doing. So you, I can see that you understand. <laughs> no, absolutely. And this, you are sharing a common issue amongst women that are now, you know, 50 and up. I mean, I right. cannot tell you how many women I've talked to who have said the same thing. Oh, I wanted to be with my kids. They mm -hmm. were great. But I went to school. I got this degree. This is right. where I thought I was going to go with it. And guess what? It just didn't work out. Yeah. I find myself telling younger women, like, be careful when you get to this age. If you have kids, you're going to want to quit because it won't make much financial sense. But if you step off, know that it's not easy to get back on. Exactly. Very difficult. Um, so, you know, I was home with my kids. I did a few film projects here and there. Uh, and my it comes to now and I have two teenage girls, 15 and 17. And, you know, the 17 year old were visiting colleges and, you know, next year she'll be, she'll be off in college. So I, in the last few years, I've been thinking like, I need to do something. I need to kind of ramp up for when both kids are in college, which will be in three years. It's very soon. And um, I just, what I've always been a really driven, self-motivated, I would say, person. And I never imagined that I would be a stay-at-home mom for 17 years. Um, I, I intended to go back to work after my daughter was born and it just didn't happen. Right. So I just wasn't, you know, with these projects here and there, I just wasn't feeling fulfilled. 
And in the meantime, my husband's career was very successful. And, you know, there's that little bit of me that's like, well, what about me? You know? So I decided, um, I always said I was going to start a caftan company. I love caftans. I just think they're, they're wonderful. They're easy and cool. Um, and I would joke with my friends that, you know, that someday I'm going to start a caftan company, blah, blah, blah. And finally, you know, COVID hit and there was an article, I think in the New York times and a friend of mine texted me and she was like, it's now or never. You guys start oh. it now. Yeah. And I was sort of like, okay, here we go. And just jumped in, even though I had no experience in fashion or uh, apparel manufacturing or any of that. So it was a, it was a leap of faith for sure. So you had this interest in starting this business. Mm -hmm. Did you have, are you, do you sew or did you have to get people to create these for you? I do sew, but not well enough to sell anything that I made. Okay. <laughs> um, so I did have to learn about manufacturing and, you know, dealing with, in my mind, in the beginning, it was like, I'll have this little Etsy shop and I'll sell caftans and it'll be great. And then as time went on, it was like, okay, now I need to find a seamstress. I'll have a seamstress do it. And then it became, okay, now I'm going to find a manufacturer and, you know, I have, I have a website and the whole thing. So it grew for sure. So what a lot of us do when we're feeling unfulfilled, mm -hmm. we think about that dream in the back of our head. Right. Um, and you sound very much like me that you said to yourself one day, okay, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. Right. And I mean, that's how I started podcasting. That's I amazing. went to a couple of small internet radio stations in the area and I knocked on their doors mm -hmm. and I said, you know, I have a background in communications. This is what I want to do. Well, what's your show going to be about? And just off the top of my head, I said, I want to talk to real people about mm -hmm. their experiences in life. And they just got so excited. It was like, oh, oh my God, like, yeah. And <laughs> I started doing it with them. And my son was also doing sports with them. Okay. But I felt, I felt I was being kept down. Mm -hmm. And if I was going to do this, I'm doing it for somebody else, but they only gave me a spot on an afternoon, like from two to three. And I wanted to see people listening because we were doing it live. Yeah. And if I got a handful, I was lucky. And so I finally yeah, said, it's got to be rough. Yeah. I'm not going to do this, but I came home and my husband said, why don't you do it from home? Okay. And I said, well, I need a soundboard and I need this and I need right. that. He goes, okay, what if I give you $1,000? Can you do it on $1,000? I had no idea. And I just said, yes. And I right. found a way to do that. But you're right. As soon as you start, then your question is, well, how do I market it? Yeah. How do I do it really well? Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, but the fact is that we all have a different scale on what success means to us. Absolutely. And that was one of the things that I had to learn when I brought it in house to say to myself, I was doing okay there, but not the way I wanted. Mm -hmm. So what do I have to do now? And 10 years ago, we didn't have all the marketing tools that we have today. Right. Yeah. And so I just experimented, which I'm sure that's probably what you did. When you yeah. started looking for a seamstress and a manufacturer. Absolutely. Yep. Made lots of mistakes. So seamstress probably was one of the easier things that you could find, I would think. Right. So there's somebody somewhat, somewhat locally. And would well, you I, to make things more difficult on myself, I wanted to make sure that everything I did was as sustainable as possible. Okay. Because I've gotten, you know, just as I've gotten older, I've gotten more cognizant of just, you know, uh, environmental issues sure. in general, especially having kids. And especially when, as it goes with the fashion industry. 
So, you know, that's kind of like one of those things I piled on top of everything else. <laughs> so I did have to find a seamstress that, you know, would agree to be at, you know, as little waste as possible and, you know, work with me on fabrics and things like that. So what did you know about fabric? I didn't know much of anything. I knew that if I went to Target, that I didn't want to buy things that were polyester. And okay. that's about it. Okay. <laughs> you know, I knew generally what things were. Um, and that's how I started out. I, I decided I was just going to teach myself that I was going to spend the next few months, which I had because it was during COVID, uh, just learning as much as I possibly could on my own. So you know, I would go to a fabric store and I would feel different fabrics and I would see what they were called. And so it was really, it was really, it was really, it was really. So that's where I started. I love it. I love it. Floria. So, I do because <laughs> one of the things we don't typically don't give ourselves enough credit for mm -hmm. is the fact that if it's something we want to do, we can go out and learn about it. It doesn't mean that you're going to actually maybe do the sewing or the mm -hmm. or all the designing, but you're going to be able to tell somebody what your vision is because right. you've done the research. Exactly. And, you know, that's exactly what I did when I started the podcasting. Sure, my first couple podcasts, probably the first couple months were just like, yeah, <laughs> hey, would you do a podcast with me? Um and then friends and family were getting tired of me calling them saying, hey, you know, let's talk right, about right. this subject. But that's when I started researching. How do you mm -hmm. get your guests? Um, you know, if I want people on the West Coast to listen live, what time of day do I need to right. be on so that East Coast and West Coast will both listen to it? And that's why I decided I don't care if anybody listens to it live. It's going to be streamed. Right. Yeah. Once I got into that mode and mm -hmm. I started understanding what analytics were, uh -huh. then it was okay. Um, and, you know, I still go through them, you know, and I'll say, this one isn't doing real well. Right. What do we want to do about it? If we don't want to change it, in fact, one as of today, um, I canceled because the person I was doing with, I love him. He was mm -hmm. terrific. But he has a very busy schedule. So do I. Yeah. Right, and right. when we were doing it, um, I both I felt that neither one of us were really prepared. And it was only a once a month. So it's not like we oh, gotcha. Prepared, okay. Yeah. We were so comfortable with each other. Oh, we're just yeah. gonna talk about whatever. Right. And and those just they were getting hits, but not yeah. the way I wanted them to. Right. So, so when you were working with the seamstress, how, when did you know it was time to move on and, you know, find, you know, manufacturer? Well, you know, I started working with um, some seamstresses in Atlanta and pattern makers because I can draw what I want and what's in my head, but I couldn't even begin to tell you what pattern pieces would go right. together for that. Um, and it, you know, it so it was a matter of not just finding one, somebody to sew what I did. It was kind of going through each step and realizing, okay, this is what I don't know. Because when I started, I didn't know what I didn't know. Right. So I got to the point where I was like, well, I, I don't know pattern making. Um, and I did approach seamstress and uh, that company made some samples for me and they weren't great. And I can't fault the company. It was certainly as much my fault as theirs because I didn't know how to communicate at that point. Sure. What I wanted, you know. Um, so I think it was at that point, I I taught myself as all I could do in my my own way, you know, on YouTube, in books, the whole thing. And I kind of hit a wall. Um, at that point, I found a, um, a business accelerator program for sustainable fashion businesses. And I was accepted into that. And that kind of got me thinking like, okay, I need to make this a real business. I need to do things a certain way. 
And that's when I got to the point where I was like, okay, I need a manufacturer. How do I find a manufacturer? You know, uh, where would that be the whole thing? So going through that program, it was wonderful and like been so supportive. Um, but that, that made me realize there was a ton of stuff I didn't know. Um, but they were super, super helpful. So I, you know, I, I, there's a lot of winging it. I have to oh. say when you're an entrepreneur. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just talking to another entrepreneur uh, prior to this show and she just came back from vacation. It was a mm -hmm. big family vacation. And I said to her, so while well, you were on vacation, did you have your laptop? Did you work? And she said, come on, Karen, you know, I did. Because yeah. when you're an entrepreneur, Yep. You know, yes, you take time for your family, but there's that little bit in you that says, hey, I'm going to have to see what my emails are. I'm going to have to check up on the business. Um, right. It's, and that's something that a lot of people don't understand. They get all excited. Well, look what you're doing. Wow. That's what I want yes. until they see all the pieces and parts to it. Right. So COVID is over. Yep. You find a manufacturer. Found a manufacturer. Um, yep. Um, I learned how to source fabrics. Um, and I came up with my designs. And I um, you know, it was all a matter of like getting everything to come together at the same time. And I launched about a year and a half ago. Um, and I I launched just on my on I have a Spotify website, so it looks like the Dessou Loungewear sure. website. Um, and I sell through there. It I wanted to go the direct to consumer route instead of doing retail sure. because, you know, you're dealing with whole different calendars and I wanted to keep the products accessible as far as price went. So how did you, I also had to deal with marketing. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm sorry. Well, how did you know what your customers would want? I mean, you're making these designs, but you know, some people like, a big flowing caftan. Some right. like it, you know, more slenderizing. Um, and we all like different materials. So how did you, did the classes you take teach you how to figure that out? And out, and out, and out. Me tips. I have to say one of the best things, best thing, best thing, best something that the group teach taught us too, is that start talking about your product before you have a product. But, but, because you feel like, you know, what, nothing to say about this. And I have to say, I tend to get anxious and I will start something and be really excited about it and set it aside. So a little mind trick for myself was announcing I'm starting this company right at the very beginning, because in my head, I thought, well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to blow it off if, you know, everyone in the world knows I'm doing this. So I did have a good group of people following just my website and following what I was doing. So I was able to do polls and things like that and, you know, interview people, um, and get an idea of what they were looking for. You know, it's interesting because I loved how you said you have to announce it so yes. that you can be committed to it. Yeah, um, totally. And I totally understand that. Um, when I had my fall nine weeks ago, I put it no. out there because, and very distinctly put it out. And I said, I'm not going to be able to work for a while. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that while is. Um, I'm flat on my back right now, Ugh. but I will figure this out. And right. um, there were a lot of, you know, guests I had to cancel on. And right. you know, some understood. I can't begin to tell you how many did not understand that's and crazy to, to me. And I had to take that as it's not me. Okay. Right. They have their own agenda and that is okay. Yeah. Um, and even getting back into the swing of things now and getting things back on the calendar. Um, I put out another announcement the other day that I now have boundaries on what I'm doing. That's great. If you don't, whether they're your customers, your clients, your neighbors, your family, they start to think, well, hey, you know, Jacqueline, I need a caftan and this is what I want. I want this stuff. Right, right. Material. And you might 
be saying yes in the beginning, but then you get to a point and go, right. I can't do the yeses anymore. Absolutely. I have to stick to my boundaries. Yeah. It's funny that you bring up a vacation as an entrepreneur, because I have to say, I, it was always, it drove me crazy when I would go on vacation with my husband and he would be on calls all the time. And he, you know, it was part of his business and he just had to do it. The nice thing about being an entrepreneur in, in addition to the negatives that you're always on is that you can say, I will be on vacation from this date to this date any orders that come in will be fulfilled after that date. And I, I really tried to stick with it the best I can. It did help that we were at a lake house with terrible cell reception and awful Wi-Fi. <laughs> so <laughs> it was kind of self, it was, it was uh, imposed upon me and it was great. It was very nice. Well, so I'm trying I, to unplug more. Right. And it is helpful if we can, but I understand, uh, you know, living with a husband that when you go on vacation, my husband being in IT, even though so many things oh, he right. can't do remotely, mm -hmm. you know, he's taking calls at 11, 12 o'clock at night. And I'm going, right. why? And he goes, you know why? They need yeah. their hand held. And if I yeah. don't hold their hand, I may not have that account. And as right. much as I know it, there are times that I, you know, want him to be unplugged. But I exactly. do the same thing because... Right. Um, you know, I may be recording with you today and we may talk about something that all of a sudden gives me a spark and sure. you know, I'm, I'm up till midnight working on it. So right. um, it's great to be an entrepreneur. It's great to jump in feet first, mm -hmm. but you have to know that you're going to have to get back out of the water and do it the right way because if right. you don't, you're not going to get to where you want to go. Yeah, definitely. So you say, you're up and running for about a year and a half. About a year and a half now. Yeah. I've done um, you know, the collection that I launched with, and then I've done another kind of mini collection. And then I just came out with a new collection that I actually manufactured in India. Um, so this is, this one's just come out the last couple, like months ago. Um, the reason I decided to go to India for that was that I was just, it, it seems odd to move production to India while trying to be more sustainable right. and earth friendly. The problem was I was flying fabrics all over the place. You know, most of the fabrics I was working with are made in Asia. Then I, then that would go to Canada where there was this distributor, then it would come to me so I could look at it. Then it would go to my seamstress in LA. I mean, it was, it was crazy. It was all over the place. Um, and I was able, luckily I found a company in India that does everything in one place. So they mill the fabric. Oh, I'm sorry. They uh, do the dyeing and printing. They do the sewing, the whole thing. So it's, it's hard to say to someone, I moved my work to India to be more sustainable, but that's exactly what I did. So, and it's worked out really well so far. Well, that is part of the issue in our world. Okay. Totally. And yep. once, once we can sort of figure that out, um, if we ever do, uh, mm -hmm. that would be wonderful. I mean, I'm, I'm originally from Detroit and, you know, Cars were made in Detroit right. when I was growing up. And now, you know, you maybe make one part there and then you send it somewhere else and then Absolutely. they send this whole car back. And then you, and I, you know, I, I start to think to myself why, but right. it was easier for a period of time to do that. Yep. And so that's what you do because you're in business and you're in business to make money. Not to Absolutely. Money. So, right. um, so I know if you had your choice, everything would be done probably in your backyard. So right, exactly as close as possible. Make yeah. it make it as easy as possible. But um, you know, it, putting this extra you know requirement on on my company to be as sustainable and earth friendly and only use factories that are ethical and responsible, it makes things more difficult, of course. But I would I wouldn't do it any other way. I, I don't think I could live with myself putting out just another product into the market. Um, you know, when I'm just seeing what not only fashion but industry does to the planet. And I have two kids, you know, it's like even if you don't have kids, you should be concerned about it. Absolutely. 
Well, I have I have a sister in law who um, she is really into saving the earth. And we were talking one day and she said to me, do you do composting? And I said, you know, we live in a condo. There's no way we can. Yeah, right, right. She said, well, I can tell you one thing you can compost. And I said, what's that? And she said, your coffee grounds and your tea grounds. And I thought, oh, yeah. oh that's wonderful. I have never had my plants grow outside oh, right, as big yeah. and mush as they are. And so, you know, I'm doing what I can in my Yes, future. absolutely. Yep. And, and I share that with people all the time that every little bit we can do is absolutely wonderful. And, totally. And I love what you also talk about that, you know, with fabrics, because most of us don't think about fabrics and how they, after a while, if you were really to throw them away. Right, exactly. How long is it going to take them to decompose? Yeah. That's a hot issue right now, for sure. And sure. there are a lot of companies that are doing take back programs, like Eileen Fisher is doing it. There are a whole bunch of them that are now, I wish I could think of more names for you, but they're now taking back clothes from the consumers and selling them secondhand and, you know, or upcycling or doing right. lots of things to keep it, keep clothes in, in, you know, circulation longer instead of, you know, turning everything into trash. Right. Well, I'm one who's always finding some sort of uh, charity around that needs clothes. Right. Like women's yep. shelters or the good totally. or the church. Um, <clears throat> I, my mother was a seamstress. And so oh, okay. I always had something new to wear yep. every single month. And so I now have gotten to that point where, oh, I want a new blouse. Oh, I want a new pair of pants. Um, and I'm very self-conscious of what am I going to do with the other ones in my closet? Right. Um, when my mother died, it became a joke that she had over 90 pairs of black slacks with their tags in her closet. Oh, yeah. Every time my brother came to visit her, she said she needed black slacks. So he'd buy her <laughs> one pair, but two pair. <laughs> right. <laughs> she didn't wear them. Um, and I just looked at them thinking, what do I do with all these? And right. um, she was living in assisted living. And I went and said, hey, somebody here can use these pants. That's and great. A lot, lot of very happy people. So uh, I appreciate it when a manufacturer is saying the same thing. <laughs> Excuse yeah. me. So you went to school to become a lawyer. I did. And you didn't stay in that field. Um, I... Have you ever had any regrets saying, boy, I put all that time and energy. I had to pass the boards and. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> right. uh, yes, yes, yes. Um, you know, in, I do, I think back and I think, did I give up too quickly? Um, was I in the wrong field of law? Um, you know, I ended up at a firm that just didn't know how to train young associates. If I had more support, would I have been, you know, would I've done better there? It's hard to tell. Um, and, you know, as time goes on, I, I catch myself thinking like, I, I actually sat in for a friend who in criminal court one day, and it was just, you know, an appearance it was really yeah. quick, but it was lovely. It's much more casual. The judges are more friendly. You know what I mean? This, so in my mind, I'm like, I should have been a criminal lawyer. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's funny. Yeah. I was thinking about this the other day, like the older I get, the more careers I see that I'm like, ah, oh, I should have done that. Yeah, I recently started physical therapy. I'm like, physical therapist, that's a great job. <laughs> well, in the whole concept of avoid the maze is that mm -hmm. there are opportunities out there. We have to be willing right. <clears throat> to explore them. Yeah. Um, you know, be between all my podcasting and writing, um, I had a number of coaches saying to me, you know, why aren't you coaching? You've got the background, you've done the training. Mm -hmm. And I kept saying, no, I'm going to leave that to you guys. You do the coaching. Right. 
And the end of March of this year, I woke up one morning and I thought to myself, this is craziness. Because when I went into communications, <clears throat> I wanted to be in broadcasting, but helping out in the field in broadcasting, sure, sure, meeting okay. those people who needed help. Mm -hmm. And I thought, so why aren't I coaching? Why am I leaving it to everybody else? Right. Um, and yet there are some days uh, I think to myself that um, I'm an imposter because it's like, that is so how can I be common. doing this now? And I have yeah. my whole life. Absolutely. But we can. And that's, and that's yeah. what I think is exciting that, you know, maybe you will go back to law someday. You never know. I mean, it's, right. you're walking down. I mean, I hill. certainly use it in my own business. Sure. It's, it's funny. I do think that I know men suffer from imposter syndrome, but I think we women are so good at imposter syndrome. Like, <laughs> we do such a fantastic job. And I do think it's, I was talking to a, a, a mentor of mine the other day and I thought, you know, I really want to do more podcasts about sustainability and you know, more environmental stuff, but I'm, I'm not an expert. And I'm always like, well, I, I can't do this. I'm not an expert. And she said to me, she's like, well, you've spent the last how many years figuring this out and studying it. You're more of an expert than most people out there. Right. And to approach something like this, we have a problem and discuss with people, what can we do rather than saying this, 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 and this, you know, this is exactly how things are done. Um, you know, it's just encouraged me to like reach out and not always think, well, that's not me. I can't do that. Exactly. You know, and I think as women, we tend to feel like we have to have all the qualifications and men will say, oh, I've got two of those qualifications. I'll get the rest. No problem. You know what I mean? So we, I think we feel like we have to have everything buttoned up before we stick a toe in the water. Exactly. And some of us get afraid because of the culture we were brought up in. Absolutely. Um, when I was in corporate America, I was making more than my husband, but I was mm -hmm. miserable at what I was doing. Yeah, he was not. And um, I finally came home one day and I was in tears and I said, I can't go back. Yeah. And he said, but you love your job. I said, I do love my job. I love what I do. Yeah. I can't handle the culture. And, right. You know, his first reaction was just go do what you can do. Because the two of us got scared. Are we going to lose? Yeah, it? right. Of course. What is that going to look like? And it was my son who said, dad, I see her at work. No, she can't go back. Gotcha. Said, she will end up having a heart attack. And my yeah. husband looked at me and he said, is it really that bad? And my first reaction was, oh no, I can handle it. Yeah, exactly. Aren't yeah. we supposed to as women? Right. And no, I got I, it. Yeah. But I told him and he said, <clears throat> you need to take at least a leave of absence. You need mm -hmm. to figure out what you need to do. And right. it probably was a, within a month that I said, <clears throat> I know what I want to do. Um, I started writing blogs for companies. Oh, but great. I picked the companies that I believed in what they were doing. So um, there was one company that was talking about composting. Even mm -hmm. before my sister-in-law got me involved. And I said, I love this idea. How, you know, how can we get it out there? Yeah. And I knew we were only meeting a small fraction of people right but, but i believe everyone that you can that is, is it makes a difference and i'm sure that's how you absolutely with your product yeah yeah absolutely and you know i there's so many levels to i'm i'm glad that i'm offering a product that i believe in and i think people enjoy and you know want to buy i'm also glad that it's, I'm working my brain, learning new things. You know what I mean? There's so right. many levels that I am progressing. One of my mentors said one day, she's like, there's no, there's no mental exercise like that of being an entrepreneur. And it's so true because it's like every day it's something new. 
you're constantly trying to learn things that you don't know. You know, it's, you're learning to like learn on your, make decisions on your feet, pivot, all these things. So there's so many levels. And you're teaching your daughters. Yes, absolutely. You know, women do have a place in this world. And I think a lot of young women know that, but when Mm -hmm. they have a role model who is saying, look at, yeah, I went, went to college. I went to law school. I practiced law. You know, it didn't work out. I was a stay at home mom. You know, I did all these things, but now I can do something that's really for me. Right. And you all can enjoy it around me. And yeah. sometimes that's hard to say because it sounds a little selfish. It does. But, yeah. But, but it's not because right. it's, it's like putting our oxygen mask on first. Absolutely. You know, I, I, years ago when I was at home full time and had lots of like stay at home women friends, I just thought like, what a wasted resource, you know, like what, what can we all do together? It's like, we need a, a mom think tank or something. You know what I mean? I just feel like there's, we need flexibility with our families, but we also need to be using our brains and using all that education we came up with, you know? Well, and I, and I think the younger generation is starting to do that. Um, My youngest will be 33 next month. And he was saying to me, well, about five years ago, he kept saying, I can't believe how many of my friends are getting married, Mm -hmm. you know? And then a year or two later, I can't believe how many of them are having kids. Right. Now he's telling me how many did not get married, Uh you know, because he's realizing that he's not the only one who's out there working on his career. And, you know, I said to him, you know, when I was growing up, if you weren't married by the time you were 20, 22, Oh, absolutely. You know, you were considered, you know, off the market, you know? Yeah. I said, but the fact that you can live your life and be happy and have the career that you want, that you're bringing more happiness to this world than maybe some of those that did get married just because they thought it was the right thing to do. Right. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about your website. How can our listeners find you and maybe, you know, buy a calf time from you. That would be lovely. Um, my website is Disu Loungewear and Disu is D-E-S-S-O-U-S loungewear.com. Um, Disu means underneath. So that's back to my joke being like, I used to say I was going to make a company. It would be called Never You Mind. Like Never oh. You Mind was under here. <laughs> <laughs> like that. <laughs> So yeah, so Desu Loungewear. I'm also on Instagram um, under Desu Loungewear as well. We'll make sure we get that all in the show notes and uh, we'll right. have you back on and we will talk about the environment. And oh, I would love that so much. Some of the things that we can do. Um, like I said, once my sister in law brought up, well, at least your coffee and tea grounds, it was like, right. oh, then I thought, well, where can I dump them? And uh, she said, well, you've got planners outside put them in the planners it was like oh and then I found out that I have been putting um cuttings of plants Uh into a container that's all coffee grounds oh oh great it it, 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 you know it's almost like its own soil so hey um but I, I shouldn't be drinking as much coffee as I am. So I may have to cut back. <laughs> it's a good for bit. the plants, Karen. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. There's so many of those small things you can do. And some of them, you know, I try different things all the time. I, I'll do like a solid dish soap instead of liquid in a can or in a, you know, plastic. plastic. Yep. Um, I've got like reusable napkins and My family is just like, they go with the flow. Some things stick, some things don't, but you know, we just keep trying it Well, and just being aware. And that, and that's what life is all about. You know, if you get stuck, you know, go try something else, you know, absolutely. You know, go take a course if that's what you need. And I will tell our listeners, there are a lot of inexpensive and free courses online. So if you're thinking, oh, oh, we can't afford it, you know, you know, just go search. I took, um, 
I already had my certification in coaching and mm -hmm. I found another certification. It was $3 on Groupon. And I thought, wow, hey, whatever I get out of it, it will at least yeah. be refreshing. Um, and I picked up things that I didn't in my original certification. I was like, hey, you know, I'm really glad I did this. And yeah. $3, hey, not a big deal. So yeah. And we're so fortunate to live in the days of YouTube. Like, right. I feel like I could do pretty much anything but surgery just by watching a YouTube <laughs> video. You know what I mean? I so love I've that. learned a ton from YouTube and just reading books yep. and none of that cost me anything, but maybe buying a book or going to the library. Exactly. Well, it costs time, but you know what? Yes. We all can find the time if it's right. something you want to do. So Jen, absolutely. Thanks for joining us today. Oh, and thank you so much for having me. I really appreciated it. We'll have you back. Thank okay, you. Okay. Thanks, Karen. Yeah. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.